not Jacoby. You're 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 not Eli or Ed or Boatman or Scully. You're the actual. You're the actually one of few British people uh, in the new British Empire. I, I, I got like everything. I, do you want me to go get my passport? It's over there somewhere. Yeah. Well, that's the whole reason why I brought you in. Like, I yeah, I was about to say that. I'm passport. the only reason. That's the only reason I'm in. <laughs> so your first opponent is Andrew. God damn us. Andrew's a nice guy. Like, yeah. He, like, I, like the guy wouldn't hurt a butterfly if he if he, if he really wanted to, but. I mean, I, I I guess we'll teach him a lesson. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Teach him a lesson in how to win gracefully, I guess. Yeah, you know. I, um, like I, like th- like this is the point in time where I normally shit talk a person and, and sort of needle them, but I, I I can't really needle them. Like like I, the, the the guy the guy is the most Canadian American I've ever met. It's amazing, like, and I've watched his matches as well. There's no the only weakness that I found in him is male pattern bonus. That's the only thing I found in him that's weak. Like, I just don't. I can't, like, this is going to be a very interesting match. It's very much the high class, the high brow. Like, he was talking about art house cinema, whereas I talk about shit like Stuck on You is the greatest film of all time. And that's why I brought you on here, because Stuck on 100%. You is one of the greatest companies ever. Greg Kinnear. But yeah, uh, I'm going to win. Yay, me. It's, it's, it's just inevitable, but there's no reason to shit talk Andrew. Super nice guy. Yeah, super nice. Is my mic working, by the way? It is. Absolutely. Can you hear the sus? Oh, yes, yes. We, we, should, we should probably practice that. Satan's Alley. Satan's, Satan's Alley. Satan's Alley. Satan's yes. Alley. I'm actually going to say the answers this time, so that hopefully will work. And if it, and if they don't accept my answer, I'm just going to pretend that my accent kicked in, because apparently Brian does need a translator for me. What are you saying, man? I said they're perfectly right. I did not say Marlon Brando. I said Robert De Niro. You just heard my accent wrong. What? I don't know. Okay. I've drank too much coffee today. How dare you bring up my male pattern baldness, sir? Should I bring up how America beat the Yank, uh, the uh, the British for a while, twice, in fact? Um, no. Otherwise, Tony Tony is a really nice guy. They're falling for my nice guy trap. Um, Tony and Brooklyn are great. Uh, I don't have really much to say. Um, I Tony seems like one of the most fun competitors in this league. Um, whether that's a ruse, we'll find out. Uh, bring it on. I'm excited. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the world of Movie Warzone. I am not your regularly scheduled host. I am the King Caleb Coho, and we have a debut players match in Movie Warzone, and one of your regularly scheduled hosts is here. It's Brian Michaels. How are you doing, Brian? I am doing great today. I'm going to have fun. These are both guys, uh, both guys that we like, both guys we've had around here helping to host, and Tony's one of our writers, though not for this match for obvious reasons. Um, but, you know, if nothing else, it's going to be fun. Absolutely. Uh, Tony is the guy that you get to uh, to shit talk, and Andrew is the guy you get to yell at you passive-aggressively in debate and win three or four points that you weren't expecting to lose. Uh, so they're both guys that I've faced in different areas, uh, in different leagues, and both are uh, really knowledgeable competitors, so it's going to be fun to see how they do. Uh, so we'll go ahead and bring in our competitors. So introducing first... Representing the new British Empire, making his movie war zone singles debut, led to the ring by his manager, Brooklyn Vale. It is Tony Smash Mouth Healed. Tony, how you feel? You ready to go? Yeah, I feel ready. This is gonna be a good match. Uh let's hope that the money that I paid Kayla actually comes in handy. Uh listen, the Venmo didn't go through yet, so Fuck. we can't say we can't say that that counts yet. Uh and his opponent. Also making his movie war zone debut, representing cult classics, he is Andrew the Dive Bar. Andrew, how you doing? Uh, you ready to make your debut here today? I'm super excited. Uh, sorry, Tony. Uh, pounds don't transfer over via Venmo. Ah, uh, bollocks. Uh, that's why. <laughs> so, the, so sorry, <laughs> sorry. Uh, I just changed the entire match doc on you. Uh, to get this started. Uh, so, Brian, you want to explain to him round one as we get right into uh, round one? Yes, round one, as well, these guys know, but just for our audience out there, round one is eight questions in eight different categories, each worth one point each. 
If you get them all right, you will get a ninth question, also worth one point. You must write your answers on your board. And when we call on you, you must show it to us and enunciate clearly your answer. Right. Absolutely. So uh, with that, we'll get into question number one, which is in the category of comedy. This is 40 is a spinoff from what other Judd Apatow movie? Both went to the board so quickly on that one. <laughs> yeah, let's start them off with an easy one. You know, um, I I don't know what 40 is. Uh, sadly, I, I used to, but I'm past that. Time. It's a number, Caleb. Four, Four. Five. Three. Two. One. Thank I have you. Some, I have some three-year-olds that can actually count to 40. Yeah, uh, I'm right. sad that you can't. <laughs> uh, we'll, go to, we'll go to Tony. Knocked up. That is correct. And Andrew? Knocked up. That is correct. Both are on the board. I get this for winning a point. <laughs> oh, we should have done the way around, Caleb. You're going to want to read question four. But anyway, question two. In the category of directors, is simply who directed the Royal Tenenbaums? Um, I know something about being royal. <laughs> you know something about going on power trips lately, too, from what I see. Ooh. Um, I wouldn't call it a power trip. I would call it making the league fairer. Right. Four, <laughs> three, two, one. Mark is down. I'll start with Andrew. I'd be angry at myself for missing one of my favorite movies. It's Wes Anderson. And Tony? Fuck! Paul W.S. Anderson. <laughs> oh. I was thinking that. I was like, he didn't even go Paul Thomas. He went Paul W.S. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> on the level on the tiers of Anderson, I think that's like a C tier Anderson. So that was a, he went he went somewhere, man. I knew, uh, I knew those Anderson w Cooper Anderson. would have been better. Your third question comes to the category of horror. What horror film had a zombie redneck torture family known as the Buckners? Listen, I read that question out loud, and as I was going, I was like, I'm making this up as I go. You're this not is not though. a real thing. You are. You aren't, and that's what makes it so funny. Jesus. Without saying anything, have you seen this movie? No. Five, oh, you absolutely should. Four, <laughs> three, two, one. Marker's down. All right, we'll go to Andrew. Cabin in the Woods? That's correct, and Tony. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I ah! Uh, Incorrect. Stupid horror. Question four in the category of recent releases. Who plays Elton John's mother in Rocket Man? Uh, this is no longer my favorite movie of the year, but it's my second favorite. Ooh. Movie. Oh. Ooh. I saw a little. I saw a little movie called The Peanut Butter Falcon. That's yeah, I was supposed movie. to see that after this match today, but my plans in the afternoon changed. Five, uh, four, three, two, one. I'll catch you later this week. Too. Markers down. I'll start with Tony. Random shot in the dark, Julie Walters. And Andrew. Right. Give her her Oscar, Bryce Dallas Howard. That is correct. That is correct. And also correct on the Oscar. <laughs> All right. Your fifth question comes to the category of 80s movies. Or as John Bellion would say, 80s films. Nice. Uh, what is the subtitle of the fourth film in the Friday the 13th series? <sighs> Not as fast as their boards this time. No, because this is a franchise that we would call Le Yikes. <laughs> is that the French version? Five, uh, that is the French four, version. Three, <laughs> the No Magique. Two, one. Marker's down. Marker's down, Tony. Yeah. Uh, go, Andrew? Jason Returns? And Tony? No, I'm not saying. I didn't put Freddy instead of Jason. Oh, wow. Uh, the answer was the final chapter. The final chapter. <laughs> and then they lied to us. Then they lied to us. And made eight I, thought was, I thought that was the third one. Can I challenge that? The fourth one was the final, <laughs> the final chapter, and they made six more. Uh, right. no, per no perfect rounds here today. Well, well actually, eight if you count Freddy versus Jason and uh, the reboot. The remake. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, your next question in the category of dramas. What is the profession of Greg Kinnear's character in As Good As It Gets? I think that would have been like a perfect movie to like end right there. Would have been like a great movie to end someone's career. And then they're like, you know what? Another decade of movies will be fine. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Markers down. Um, Tony. This is much easier when I'm writing the questions. Lawyer? 
And Andrew. Critic? No, he was a painter. A painter. <laughs> All right, Pikachu, guys. Pikachu, lore on the side. You don't know. Oscar winning film. You guys should see this thing. Your pent ultimate question comes to the category of disaster movies, which is what we are slowly becoming. <laughs> what movie starring Sylvester Stallone was about a group of survivors trying to escape a collapsed tunnel? Hint, this is not Rocky V. I'm just loving the puzzled look on with their faces. Ah, oh, fuck. Uh, this five, would be more interesting than the four, actual Rocky V. Three, <laughs> two, most things would. Fine. Marcus down. I saw Tony racing, so he said nothing. Yeah. Uh, and Andrew. I've never heard of this. Canary in a coal mine? Uh, no, looking for daylight. Daylight. Oh, that's what that's about. Okay. <laughs> Is that the one where he has to go through the fans? Uh, it might have been. Where, yeah, it's like he's uh, climbing down and he's going through fans. Probably. I remember been a long time that, since. Yeah. All right, your last question in the category of biopics. Name one of the two actors who played Brian Wilson in Love and Mercy. Oh, Actually, I meant to write in the question, Brian the Beach Boy is Brian Wilson. Wilson. If that makes a difference. There you go. Uh, it's like, oh, now I know it. Five, I hear the name Brian Wilson. Three, I think of Crazy three, Eagles Genius by Pack. Two, one. Marcus down. Andrew? I think of Fair Naked Ladies. Uh, Paul Dano and John Cusack. And Tony. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So at the end of round number one, I believe Andrew's in the lead with five. Tony has one. But anything can happen as we get to round number two. Which is the wheel round. It works like this. Works like how, Brian? Explain so I get the wheel. <laughs> uh, round two, you get to spin the wheel by the virtual wheel, not the virtual pegs. You will have eight categories plus spinners and opponents' choice. If you don't like what you get on your first spin, you can spin again, but then you will be stuck with your second spin. Uh, for your category, you'll get five questions, each worth two points. If you decide to go to multiple choice, you can, but then it is only worth one point, and stealing is available. All right, your categories on the wheel are Spinner's Choice, Stage to Screen Musicals, Movie Release Dates, Comedy, Fast and Furious Franchise, Movie Taglines, Courtroom Dramas, Stephen King Adaptations, and Rowan Atkinson. Uh, Andrew, you are in the lead. Would you like to go first or defer to Tony? Uh, I will let Tony go first. Okay. All right, so your spin is away, and it lands on... Spinner's choice. Nice. Son of a... Okay. Um, so I need to get a few points here, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, so the obvious one would be Roman Atkinson, like, and then maybe comedy. Yeah, I'd say probably Roman Atkinson. Yeah, Roman Atkinson. Yeah. All right. Uh, Brian, you want to give Tony his questions in Roman Atkinson, or should I? Should um, I'll go ahead and give him those. Go ahead. Okay, Tony, your first question in Rowan Atkinson. In Scooby-Doo, Atkinson plays Emil Mondavarius, owner of a resort called what? Thank you, Jacoby. Spooky Island. <laughs> uh, thank you, Jacoby. is not part of the title. I'm sorry. Ah, <laughs> but yes, that's worth two points. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Question two. In The Tall Guy, who plays the titular straight man comedy partner to Rowan Atkinson's Ron? Multiple choice. Is it A? Sorry, multiple John, choice, yeah. A, John Cleese, B, Tim Robbins, C, Jeff Goldblum, or D, James Cromwell? Uh, John Cleese? That is incorrect. Andrew, would you like to try to steal? James Cromwell? Also incorrect. The correct answer was Jeff Goldblum. Ah, yeah. Goldblum. It was my first thought. Question three for Tony. At the beginning of Johnny English Strikes Back, Johnny has retired from MI7 and is working as what? Oh, God. I, I saw this in a cinema and I can't remember. Fucker. Oh. It's post? I think it's a posty, but mobile choice. Is it A, a teacher, B, a tour guide, C, a bus driver, or D, a librarian? Bus driver. Incorrect. Andrew. Tour guide? No, he is working as a teacher. A teacher. 
Hmm. The teacher misses the question about the teacher. <laughs> I teach babies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he did too. <laughs> Your penultimate question in Rowan Atkinson. Rowan Atkinson spoofed James Bond in three Johnny English movies, but also appeared in what James Bond movie? Never say never again. That is correct for two points. <clears throat> and your final question for Rowan Atkinson. What affliction does Atkinson's character suffer from in Rat Race? Narcolepsy. That is correct for two points. I knew that question was going to come up. I knew it was. <laughs> so hey, pull out six points point in that lead. round, bringing you to seven. Two point lead. We bring back the wheel. And Andrew, your spin is away, and it lands on Rowan Atkinson, which is gone. So you get a free re spin, and it lands on Fast and Furious, which I think oh, is going to get. Spin. All right. And you're stuck with Spinner's Choice. I love how the lag on the share screen makes it look like you're calling it before it stops. Yeah. <laughs> Hmm. Fast and Furious is still there if you want it. <laughs> no. Um, Go on. Be a man. <laughs> let's. You don't want to play dirty. Anyway. Stage to screen comedy. musicals. Stage to screen musicals it is. All right. Your first question, round two. I love that I get to ask these. <laughs> Who directed Guys and Dolls? Multiple choice. So A, George Kikor, B, Robert Wise, C, Stanley Donan, or D, Joseph Mankiewicz? Stanley Donan. That is incorrect, Tony, the chance for one point D? D is correct for a point. Do I deserve a trophy for that? I say yes. All right. Your second question is today's to Scream Musicals. What musical contains the songs I Whistle a Happy Tune and Getting to Know You? Ugh, The King and I. I respect the ugh on that one. Two points. It's not a bad film. What are you on about? It's not a good story. Your third question is today's to Scream Musicals. Who placed the opera singer Carlotta Guticelli in 2004's Phantom of the Opera? Mini Driver. Two more points. Your fourth question in stage to screen musicals. What color are the magical slippers Dorothy wears in 1978's The Wiz? <sighs> Trying to remember if they keep it the same way. Let's knock it down to one point, possibly. All right, your options are A, red, B, gold, C, silver, or D, green. They may stick with the... They may stick with the book for this version. Let's go with silver. That is correct for a point. And your last question in round two, stage to screen musicals. In Sweeney Todd, what is the original name of Johnny Depp's character? <laughs> Benjamin Barker! That was correct for two points. And I apologize <laughs> to headphone users who are now dead. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah, I get an advantage over Tony now. All right, so we are at 12 to 8 at the end of round number two, but anything can happen as we get into round number three. How does that work, Brian? Round three is what we call our pick your poison round. Our competitors will get six categories to choose from. They choose what they want for their one point, two point, three point, and four point questions. And the questions do get progressively harder with point value. Um, the categories you have to choose from today are actors and actresses, Oscars, screenwriters, Ewan McGregor, scores and soundtracks, and movie quotes. We're going to give our competitors a chance to choose what they want, and we'll be right back. All right, back from picking their poisons, we start with Tony. Uh, Tony has selected actors and actresses for his one, movie quotes for his two, Oscars for his three, and Ewan McGregor for his four. And Andrew has selected movie quotes for his one, Oscars for two, scores and soundtracks for three, and actors and actresses for four. So, Tony, your one-point question in the category of actors and actresses Yep. Name three of the four actors who have played Jack Ryan in feature films. Three to four, so. Who 
just trying to remember. I'm just trying to make sure I don't get confused and with. Sarah Fleet in five, four. Uh, three, Chris Pine, Tom two. Cruise, Harrison Ford. It's incorrect. We've accepted yeah. Alec Baldwin, Harrison Ford, Ben Affleck, or Chris Pine. Ah, I knew you were thinking, you were thinking Jack Reacher. Yeah, I made that mistake every goddamn time. I do too. All right, so we stay with Tony for his two point question, which is in movie quotes. What holiday film does the following quote come from? We're going to have the hap, hap, happiest Christmas since Bing Crosby tap danced with Danny fucking K. Okay, so the swearing makes me not think it's not it's a wonderful life. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to bad Santa. What'd you say? Sorry. Bad Santa. That is incorrect. Look for National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Rita has swearing in it. Yeah. The um, one. All right. It's so a, that's an American thing. It's never been over here. All right. So your three point question is going to be in the category of Oscars, Tony. Paul Newman. Received his first Best Actor Oscar nomination for what film? Ah, oh, fuck. I hate everyone living in the world right now. <laughs> but mostly me and Caleb Bowman. Yeah, mostly you and Caleb Bowman. I am going to make your life a misery. Um, Four. You do repeat stuff? Three? Yeah, repeat. Three. All first right, repeat. that is your first repeat. Paul Newman received his first Best Actor Oscar nomination for what film? Uh, Paul Newman. Paul Newman. Paul Newman. If I keep rubbing my temples, it may come to me. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to go with the one that... Uh, this this four, thing? Three, two, this thing. Let's look correctly for a cat on a cat hot tin roof. Tin roof. And God, now it calls. comes down, Sorry. comes to your four point question, which is in Ewan McGregor. Come on, you Scottish bastard. In what movie does Ewan McGregor play Inspector Alistair Martland? Oh, God, it's not the five. Four. Repeat. Second repeat. This is second repeat. All right. In what movie does Ewan McGregor play Inspector Alistair Martland? Oh, God. Oh, my brain. Uh, uh, four. Three. One more time, I just like hearing your voice, Cole. All right. Uh, thank you. No one else does. In what movie does Ewan McGregor play Inspector Alistair Martland? I don't know why, but I keep thinking Murder on the Orient Express. Five, four. That's the only thing three, that's coming to mind Murder on two, the Orient Express. Two. And your winner, by way of technical knockout, Andrew, the dive bar. The answer was Mordecai. Mordecai. Johnny oh. Depp, you son of a bitch. I'm so sorry that you had that movie had to be your question. <laughs> oh. oh, man. What a, ma what a match, Brian. It was. It was. Um, you know, it, it, not not the highest scoring match, but it was entertaining. Um, <laughs> Tony has spare trophies that he can keep for himself. I don't really know why he has all these. I'm going to dart. So I'm going to some peek in my life, okay? I'm going to throw out the window and kill the people down below. <laughs> um, if I needed it. But yeah, Andrew, Andrew takes the win with a TKO. Uh, absolutely. Uh, great, great performance from Andrew. Uh, nine for thirteen in his in his uh, debut match is really solid. Um, but yeah, uh, solid performance from both Tony, of course, bringing the entertainment. Yeah, even if uh, he he couldn't quite pull out the win there. Uh, we'll go to some post match interviews. Brian, you want to conduct those? I certainly will. Uh, sure. Let's go to sure. our winner first, Andrew the Dive Bar. Andrew finally making debut here in the singles division here in. Uh, movie Warzone. How do you feel about your performance? Um, I feel okay. Um, I could have done a little bit better in round one. Um, 
and I kind of just got lucky with getting Spinner's Choice. Um, Tony put up a better fight than I think people think that he does because he's a better fighter than people think that he is. He's underrated in, uh, in all honesty. Um, I Yeah, I think things just went my way for me today. That's, that's how it happens sometimes. Um, Tony, I'm so happy I got to play you. Um, you're... You're so much fun to play, and that's exactly what I wanted uh, in my first match. So thank you. Thank you. Seriously. Well, I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot more of you in the future, along with your teammate, Ethan Beller and Cult Classics. Um, so with that, we will go over to our unfortunate loser today, Smash Mouth Tony Heald. Uh, Tony, you had a rough match. I, I think round one, you, you know, it, it really hurt you, and you were trying to get it. Round two, you actually did quite good. Um, so I just want to give a bit behind the scenes. The uh, match between Iron Eagles and the Concept, I wrote most of the questions for round one and people complained they were too hard. Is this your fucking punishment to me? <laughs> you said it, like, I got one point. One point. It, it, it was not an intentional you. punishment. I don't know if possibly some of the fact that, you know, maybe some of the American films just don't translate or I don't know what has and has been released over there. We try not to, you know, we try not to uh, mess with that, but I don't, I don't know what you have and haven't seen. But unfortunately, yeah, round one was a little rough. Like I said, round two, you managed to get Spinner's Choice, and so you, you yeah. started to stage a comeback there. But then the Pick Your Poison round, just, just the wrong categories came up. Yeah. Um, but o overall, how do you feel about how you did tonight? Um, honestly, I'm disappointing myself. Like, that round one, I should have done better. Like, I normally hit three, at least four as a minimum. Hitting one is fucking shambles. I am very disappointed in myself. Like, um, this was, like, my first match in, like, a – like not to offend other place, but properly like on my own. And I kind of feel like I shot the bed. So yay. <laughs> Brooklyn, do you have anything to say? Um, I know this is the first loss that I've had, like as a, as a manager. Uh, so it's sort of this sort of sad that way, but you I'm know, sorry. this is it's fine. It's all part of the plan because we initially make you out to be a shitty player. And then you get booked by week, you get booked with weaker opponents, and then you just slowly get better and better. That's that's the plan. You got to take no, a step back. I know back how to, they work. I know how they work. You have, to, you have, to, you have to take a step back to go four steps forward. So you know it's all it's all it's all part of how the empire will rise. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with taking a loss. Taking a loss. I mean, like you said, you know, you get put in the losers bracket, so to speak, and you get maybe a few easier edge, and then you get back up to the harder competition. But you never know what's going to happen. Um, Tony, obviously, I mean, he he knows his stuff. He's shown in, in Fandom League that he knows his stuff. He's shown in here in the teams division he knows his stuff. Just today, the questions just didn't go his way, and he can blame me for that all he wants. Uh, he'd say probably rightfully so, because, you know, Caleb doesn't do anything around here. I know. I was but, about, uh, <laughs> I'm going to say every round two, I apologize in future. You're going to have some shit on there. Like Angry <laughs> Cat movies. Angry Cat movies is going to be your next round. Well, good to know. Now I know what to study. So there's that. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, but yeah, we'll be seeing more of you in the future. And uh, so we'll bring back uh, Caleb. Uh, yeah. I don't know what Brooklyn's saying about first loss as a manager. Uh, Dave and Harley were in his faction from day one and never won a match. So uh, very confused as to disowning people that were part of your faction. Good move, manager. Um, however, uh, solid performance today from both. Uh, yeah. And Tony gets to go in that loses bracket and uh, and be entertaining. So, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, he is uh, entertaining, I but I don't, I I don't think we should underestimate him. He does know his stuff, too. So, um, But, yeah, you know, maybe I'll maybe I'll run into him uh, once he gets a win. We'll see. Uh, but that's going to be frustrating. Uh, <laughs> I, about to get my second. Uh, however, uh, that's going to do it from us here at Movie Warzone. From everyone here, that's been Andrew. That has been Tony. That has been Brooklyn. That has been Brian. I have been Caleb. And this has been Movie Warzone. We'll see you guys next week. Another great match.